Hi, this is Joachim for statisticsglobe.com and in this video I'll explain how to remove data frame rows with some or all NA in the R programming language. So in the video I'm going to show you six different examples and all of these examples are based on the data frame that we can create with the lines two to four of the code. So if you run these lines of code you will see that at the top right of our studio a new data frame object appears which is called data and we can also have a look at this data frame by clicking on the data object and then you can see that our data contains six rows and three columns x1, x2 and x3 and all of these columns contain an A values at different positions. So let's assume that we want to remove all rows where at least one of the columns has an NA value. Then we can apply the NA omit function as you can see in line six of the code. So if you run line six of the code, you can see that at the top right of RStudio, a new data frame object is created, which is called data one. And we can have a look at this data frame by clicking on the data object. And then you can see that this data frame contains only three rows, but all of these rows contain values in each of the columns. So in other words, we removed all rows with at least one missing value. Now, as you have seen in this first example, we did this by applying the NA omit function. However, the R programming language also provides other functions that are able to remove rows with missing data. And I want to show you several alternatives in the next examples. So in line eight of the code, I'm using the complete cases function to create a data frame without missing rows. So if you run line eight of the code, you will see that another data frame is created at the top right of our studio, which is called data two. And if you click on this data frame, you will see that this data looks exactly the same as data one that we have created before. But this time we have created this data frame based on the complete cases function. Now, another function that we can use to remove rows with an A values is the is an A function and we can use the isNA function in combination with the rowsums function to remove NA values. And if you run line 10 of the code, you will see that a new data frame is created, which is called data three. And again, this data frame is consisting only of rows that contain no NA values. Now, so far in this tutorial, we have only used functions that are provided by the basic installation of the R programming language. However, there also exist packages that provide functions to manipulate data frames in the R programming language. And one very powerful package is the tidyr package that we can install and load as you can see in lines 12 and 13 of the code. I have installed the package already, so I'm just going to load it with line 13 of the code. And after running this line of code, we are able to use the functions of the tidyr package. So one function of the tidy R package that I want to show you is the drop and a function, as you can see in line 15 of the code. And we can use the drop and a function to remove rows with at least one missing value, as you can see in line 15. So if you run this line of code, you will see that another data object is created at the top right of our studio, which is called data four. And again, this data frame consists only of rows that contain no missing values. So far in this video, I have only shown you examples on how to remove rows where at least one variable contains a missing value. However, it is also possible to remove rows only based on the missing values in a single variable. And this is what I want to show you in the next example in line 17 of the code. So in this line of code, I'm again using the is an a function, but this time I'm not looking for an a values in all of the columns but only in the column x1. So if you run line 17 of the code, you will see that another data object is created, which is called data five. And if you click on this data object, you will see that a new data frame was created. And this time you can see that our new data frame contains five rows. However, you can also see that the third row was removed. And this is because our original data was containing an, an A value in the third row. You can also see that this new data frame data five still consists of an A values in the columns X2 and X3, but the column X1 does not contain any missing values anymore. So in example five, I have shown you how to use the isNA function to remove 
rows with an NA value in only one column. However, we can also do that by using the dplyr package. And we can install and load the dplyr package as you can see in lines 19 and 20 of the code. I have installed the dplyr package already, so I'm just going to load it with line 20 of the code. And now we are able to use dplyr functions such as the filter function. So in line 22 of the code, I'm using the filter function in combination with the isNA function. And again, I'm only removing rows where the column x1 has a missing value. So if you run line 22 of the code, you will see that another data frame was created. And we can have a look at this data frame by clicking on data six at the top right of RStudio. And then you can see that this data frame consists of exactly the same values as data five that we have created before. However, what you also can see is that the filter function numerates the row names of our new data frame from one to the number of rows. Okay, so in this video, I have shown you many different examples on how to remove rows with at least one missing value or with a missing value in only one of the columns. However, in case you want to learn more on this topic, you could check out my homepage, statisticsglobe.com, because on the homepage, I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail, and I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video. Furthermore, if you have liked the video, I would be very happy if you leave me some positive feedback in the comments and make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notifications in future when I'm releasing new videos to the channel. That's it for this video. Thanks a lot. See you next time.